And I would like you to write this in your notes, nice and bold somewhere. I think this is a perfectly good place right here. So in your notes, write down this statement. Acetylcholine that I mentioned before, acetylcholine. Abbreviated many ways, everyone. ACH, ACH, ACH. Believe it or not, the last one is the proper abbreviation, but you always see some version of ACH for this. Acetylcholine. This is a ligand. That will open. Chemically gated or ligand gated, if you like. What ligand in parentheses will open ligand gated sodium ion channels, sodium ion channels, Na plus, on the cell membrane of skeletal muscle cells. I'm going to say that again. Acetylcholine. When the background is blue, everything highlights a different color, different way. Okay. Nope. I'm just testing my different highlighting colors here to see if one is better than any of the others. Whoa, not that one. I'm not thinking so. Okay, you know what I'll do? I'm going to circle it then. Acetylcholine will open sodium ion channels on skeletal muscle cells. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. This is a monumentally big deal for us. So imagine a skeletal muscle cell. You've seen them before, even though you and I haven't gone over all the parts. You've seen these cells before. Skeletal muscle fiber. Striated. We don't even know what causes the stripes yet, but we will, trust me. Stripe, multiple nuclei per cell, right? Nucleus, nuclei, great big giant cells, some of the longest in the body. But what I'm telling you, and I can do this with my picture, because it's just a document in Word, as long as my mouse cooperates, I can zoom in and tell you that every so often on my cell I've got an ion channel that's a ligand gated or a chemically gated sodium channel. So a doorway for sodium. What's the key? The ligand acetylcholine. So when acetylcholine hits this thing, the doorway opens and then sodium can go in or out of the cell. 
So I open a doorway for sodium in the cell membrane of this muscle cell. And this idea of sodium ions moving into or out of the cell might ring some bells with you. You have a couple diagrams of this in your text, but I can certainly draw one here, nice and easy. I suggest you draw this as well. Let's draw a chunk of cell membrane. And then in the cell membrane, let's make a couple proteins. And let's call this protein the sodium potassium pump. Remember that? I'll bet you somebody in 189, some 189 professor, told you that you need to understand the functioning of the sodium potassium pump to get 223. Not to get into 223, but to understand 223. You have to understand the functioning of the sodium potassium pump, or you're not going to really know what's going on. Well, that day they told you about is here. That's this day right now. You're here. This is it. The future is now, everyone. So here we have the intracellular fluid, the cytoplasm of the cell. This is the inside of the cell. This is the extracellular fluid. Out here, the outside of the cell. if you like. And I need to ask you to grind out of your memory, what does this sodium potassium pump do? And don't be a smart aleck, that's my job. Don't be a smart aleck and say it pumps sodium and potassium, because that's right in the name. You didn't tell me anything there, did you? What does this sodium potassium pump do? If you don't remember, just imagine me wagging my finger at you right now because you're supposed to remember. If you don't remember, the sodium potassium pump uses active transport. So this is an energy costing mechanism, isn't it? to pump sodium and potassium ions through or across the cell membrane. Well, here's my question for you. Who goes where and how many? Who goes where and how many at a time? Well, let's do it. Let's get serious now. I'm going to use a bright blue here, I think. That one's a little better. Here's what the sodium potassium pump does. It pumps sodium's out three at a time. And it pumps potassium's in two at a time. Three sodium's out, two potassium's in every time it runs. I'm going to repeat that. Three sodiums out, two potassiums in, every time it runs. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. That's the sound of the pump. Pumping sodiums out of the cell, 
and potassiums into the cell. Three sodiums out, two potassiums in. It is important, in fact, I'll say it's vitally important for us to understand and remember this numerical difference. Imagine if something as simple as dividing poker chips or candy or something like that is going on. Let's say I have a great big pile of M&Ms like that. And I'm splitting them up between you and me. So three for me, two for you. Three for me, two for you. Three for me, two for you. Who ends up with more M&Ms? Me. Who ends up with less M&Ms? You. That's not a fair division, is it? But let me ask you the question a different way. Think about it. Keep that thinking cap on. Let's say I do this unfair division of M&Ms. Let's say I give myself 12. And for every three I get, you got two. So you're going to have two thirds as many as me, right? So this is me. I get 12 M&Ms. You. That's you. You got eight. Two thirds of my 12. Here's the question asked a different way. Think about it. Which one of the two of us got M&Ms in the deal? Both. That's not a real definitive question. The question is who gets more M&Ms? me. I got extra M&Ms compared to you, didn't I? Now let's go back to our cell membrane and let's talk about sodiums and potassiums. Let me clean up a little bit here. So you might be able, we don't need the M&Ms anymore. So you might be able to better see what it is I'm talking about. Goodbye, M&M's. Just doing a little cleanup here with my eraser function. So bear with me, everybody. I could edit it out, but hey, this is real life. This is you. Sometimes you have to erase stuff. People live in class have to watch me erase the whiteboard. You got to watch me erase the no board. So if I'm pumping three sodiums out and two potassiums in every time this sodium potassium pump runs, where are all the sodiums going to end up? In the extracellular fluid. Where are all the potassiums going to end up? In the intracellular fluid. That much we know. But let's just give it a numerical value so we can see the difference here. Let's say sodiums outside, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sodiums out here. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine sodiums are in the extracellular fluid. How many potassiums would be in the intracellular fluid then? Two thirds, right? Two thirds of nine is six. So I'd have six potassiums in here. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. Because that's the ratio set up by the sodium potassium pump, right? Three to two. So first, let me ask you the dumb question, looking at this sketch. Which side of the cell membrane is positive? The extracellular side or the intracellular side? I'm going to ask it again. Which side of the cell membrane is positive? The smart aleck answer is yes, they are both positive. How about this example? I've got two people, one's six foot nine and one's six foot seven. Which one's tall? Dumb question. Which one's taller? Six foot nine. Does that make sense? So both sides of the cell membrane, as I have drawn them, tend to carry a net positive charge. It's just which one has a greater positive charge. This one right here. The extracellular fluid is more positive than the intracellular fluid. So in your notes, thanks to the sodium potassium pump, Thanks to the sodium potassium pump, the extracellular fluid, did I forget an H there perhaps? The extracellular fluid is more positive than the intracellular fluid. Is more positive than the intracellular fluid. The outside is more positive than the inside. The sodium potassium pump did that for us. The outside of the cell is more positive than the inside of the cell. In my picture, whoops, I can see that. The sodium potassium pump did that. It set up an electrical difference across the cell membrane. How much more positive? How much is the difference between these two sides of the cell membrane, electrically speaking? Well, you know what we could do? Is we could take a little device called a voltmeter, and people actually do this, put an electrode outside the cell, an electrical inside, electrode inside the cell, wires, Go to my little voltmeter box, which has gradations and a little dial, and I can measure the difference. The outside is more positive than the inside is. How much depends on the cell? How much depends on the cell? About 70 millivolts in neurons or nerve cells is the difference. 85 or 90 millivolts for skeletal muscle cells. Eighty-five or ninety millivolts. Most people just say about ninety millivolts is the difference. Meaning, the outside of the cell is 
plus 90 millivolts. The inside of the cell is minus 90 millivolts compared to the outside. That's the difference between them. I just gave you the example of two people, didn't I? Tall people. If person A is six feet seven inches and person B is six feet nine inches, what's the difference in height? Two inches. Person B is plus two inches compared to person A. Person A is minus two inches compared to person B. It depends on who you're talking about, right? In biology, we call this idea the resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential. It's just the way the cell sits there. It has a membrane potential, an electrical difference across the membrane of 90 millivolts while it just sits there. The sodium potassium pump did that for us. We express it as a negative number like negative 90 millivolts for skeletal muscle cells. So slow your brain down a little bit here. If we express it as negative 90 millivolts, are we describing the inside of the cell or the outside of the cell? The inside of the cell. It's 90 millivolts less compared to the outside. This is where the negative sign comes from in this resting membrane potential. Don't think it means negative like below zero. This person that's six seven isn't a short person. They're just shorter than the six nine person. Negative two inches compared to the six foot nine person. So this negative symbol we see in the resting membrane potential only tells us we're talking about the inside of the cell, everyone. That's all that it means. We're making reference to the inside of the cell, the cytoplasm. I know I'm sort of beating a dead horse, they say, but Let's keep it up here. Skeletal muscle cell. Lots of striations. Beautiful. Multiple nuclei. Beautiful. Maybe some sodium potassium pumps. Doing what? Pumping sodiums out, potassiums in. Establishing a resting membrane potential of what? Negative 90 millivolts. Meaning there's a lot of sodiums outside. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 sodiums outside my cell. I guess that would mean two-thirds of that, 10 potassiums inside my cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which side of the cell membrane is positive? They are both positive. Which one is more positive? The outside, the extracellular fluid by 90 millivolts. We describe the inside of the cell's charge or potential, so we say the resting membrane potential is negative 90 millivolts. So now I have a question for you. Why? Why would we do all this? Why pump all those sodiums out and those potassiums in? And for us, we're talking about the sodiums. Why did we pump all those sodiums out of the cell. Because it wasn't cheap, it wasn't free, was it? We had to spend ATPs to do this. It cost us energy for the cell to pump those sodiums out. Why did we? Got to be a reason. It wouldn't make sense for us to select for this trait to evolve cells that would do this for no reason whatsoever. We would think there must be an advantage to this. I want you to think about this a little bit. Why did we pump all those sodiums out of the cell? Here's the answer. Here it comes, be ready for it. Why did we pump all those sodiums out of the cell? So we can let them back in. That is literally the reason. I kid you not. I know that sounds silly. Only at the right time can we let them back in. Wouldn't it be nifty? And yes, people, I did just say the word nifty. Wouldn't it be nifty if my cell had maybe like right here and right here and right here, some ion channels for sodium. That are normally closed. And I could make them open when I want, how I want. Because if I could make these doorways suddenly fly open. Right here. If I could unlock these ion channels, what would the sodium do? Well, it would come rushing in through these open doors, wouldn't it, in a big hurry. Why? Because I've established this condition where there's lots of sodium out here and no sodium in here. So if I could make these doors fly open, this sodium would come rushing in all at once, like that. creating a big electrical event. I wonder what I could use to open these doors. What could I use to make those doors open up? Hmm. 
what could I possibly use to make these closed sodium ion channels open up? I wonder what could make them open to let them come in? What is their ticket to re-enter the cell that I just kicked them out of? Acetylcholine. Acetylcholine would open the door and let those sodiums come rushing into my muscle cell all at once, all in one spot, when I want, how I want. Acetylcholine is the price of admission. I establish a resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts across this cell membrane just so I can open those doors and let those sodiums come back in. Why did I kick them out? To let them back in. Sounds silly, I know, but I really want you thinking about this. I want you considering this. We pump all those sodiums out only to let them come back in. Think about it, and I will see you fine people in the next lecture.